Hello, hello, hello. This is Chris Ferdinandi from GoMakeThings.com. And today we are going to see if we can take the main React website tutorial that teaches you how to use React, their tic-tac-toe game, and convert it into a completely vanilla JavaScript, completely native web component. Um, and uh, this one's probably gonna be fun. Um, we'll figure it out as we go. Um, but the way the game works is you've got this grid with a bunch of buttons uh, and you click on it and it renders an X or an O. And then when there's a winner, it shows you who it is. Uh, they also give you the ability to jump back and forth between your history, which we may or may not do today, time allowing. Um, but uh, let's dive into it. Real quick, before we start, um, if you like this sort of thing, if it sounds interesting, please do me a favor and like the video, leave a comment below and let me know. Uh, as we go through the video, if you have any questions or things you want to know more about, feel free to ask them down in the comments. And if you really like the video, I would love if you subscribed or shared it with a friend. YouTube loves that, which gets this video in front of more people. And hopefully we will slowly start to build a simpler and more resilient World Wide Web. Uh, also, if you really enjoy this sort of thing, you might also enjoy the Lean Web Club. This is my uh, coaching and courses platform you can join today, you get 30 days free um, over at leanwebclub.com, but it gives you access to my live office hour sessions every other week where you can share code, ask questions, get real-time feedback, as well as my entire course catalog of every course and workshop I've ever made, hundreds of reference tutorials, videos, documentation, and my toolkit where you can copy paste code to make building simpler and more resilient websites a little bit easier. Uh, we're probably gonna use some bits from this today as we build our project. All right, so let's get into it. So I have um, I have this code downloaded from React. They are using JSX live in the browser um, and converting it in real time into uh, plain old JavaScript using Babel. Um, so my syntax highlighter is freaking out about what's going on here, um, but uh, we're not gonna look at this much so don't worry about it. I have to keep my theme in black mode today because uh, this stays orange and the orange on white is unreadable. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do uh, over in the web components version, I've replaced the div ID equals app or root or whatever it is with a custom element, tic-tac-toe. And I want to make this into a web component. So I'm gonna use the custom elements define method I'm gonna pass in the name of that custom element, tic-tac-toe, as a string. And then I'm gonna pass in a class that extends the HTML element as the second argument. Inside this class, the first thing we wanna run is a constructor. The constructor method is going to instantiate our web component and it runs automatically on every element that has the name tic-tac-toe. Um, so this is just part of how the custom elements define method works. So we will instantiate our web component. Inside the constructor, the very first thing I have to do is run the super method. This tells the constructor to inherit the parent class properties. So all of the properties and methods of the HTML element get inherited by our custom element. Uh, and then, just because I always like to make sure things are working, we're gonna log this and running into the console and if we jump over to the browser and open it up, you can see we get our custom element and it is in fact running. Uh, so the next thing I want to do is render the HTML into the DOM. Um, and I'm gonna do that by using the inner HTML property. Um, and let's use a template literal because it makes things nice and easy. And I'm going to steal what React did. Uh, so when I set this project up, I saved a copy of the React version, ripped out all of the JavaScript, replaced the element, and then left all of their styles in place. So the easiest way for us to get going is going to be to steal their like starting HTML and reuse those class names. You can see they've got this board element here. Uh, so let's go and grab that as well. That renders the status, the history, and all of the squares. And you can also see that um, they've got this other custom element in here, square. And that is just rendering a button with a class name of square on it. Um, 
one one other really weird thing that React does is um, they use class name instead of class because uh, just because of how they work under the hood. It would create rendering issues if they didn't. Um, and class name is a, a a thing, but it's not um, it's not how you render classes in HTML. So we're going to uh, we're going to convert this over to class. And so when I reload the page, what I would expect to see is a game board. Let's, yeah, there we go. And if I look under the hood, we've got, we got buttons. Sweet. Uh, just, just a point of note here, these are not accessible. So when, when a screen reader user focuses on these, it gets announced as a button, but there's no text in there and there's no ARIA label. So it's not very obvious what's happening here. Um, so we can, we can maybe fix that as we go. Um, so the next thing here is I want to, um, I want to track what the, I guess what the next or the current, the current move is here. Right. Um, so let's, uh, let's see here. Let's say, um, define, uh, define properties. So we're going to say, um, this current move and the starting move is going to be X. How do they do this? in React, yeah, so they literally are just using X and O. So current move is X, um, and, um, or I guess technically it's not current move, right? It's next move. So this next move is X, um, and we are, let's see, how do they do this in React? So we've got next player, and then if there's a winner, it announces who the winner is. Um, so we're gonna need to, we need to get some of our elements too, right? So get, get HTML elements, because unlike React, we do not re-render the entire board every time. We um, uh, we will selectively update the DOM as needed. So let's say this, uh, what do we want to call it? This, um, we can't call it status because that's a reserve name. So we'll say this game status equals document no not document sorry this query selector um status uh and um what else do we want we probably need the game info at some point so this game info equals this query selector game info so that's going to look for these elements inside the parent element um, so let's just make sure that worked. We'll say this game status and this game info. Just like to double check as we go that things are working. Yep. So we've got our game status and our game info. Um, uh, one thing we can do with the status, right, is we can, we can give this a default value. Um, so I, I'm literally, I'm just going to copy, copy react here. Right. So we'll say, uh, well, you know what, let's, let's create a, um, let's create a function for that. Cause we are going to need to update that. Um, so we're going to, um, uh, do they call it something? Do they call it something here? Right. So, um, uh, we'll say update status and, um, so here we go, update the game status. And in here, we're going to say this game status text content equals, uh, and for now it's next player colon, and then whatever the, the next move is, right? So this, this next move, um, and then we'll say, um, set default status this update status and we are also we're going to listen for click events um so this add event listener click um because we have a whole bunch of buttons rather than attaching event listeners to each one individually it's more performant and way easier to manage if you attach an event listener to the parent element and then filter out clicks on stuff you don't need um, one other thing about using web components that's nice is rather than passing in a function, I can pass in 
this, the current instance. And uh, with the add event listener method, as long as the object that you pass in uh, and classes are objects has a handle event method on it, that method will run and automatically receive the event when uh, the event object, when this event trigger happens. Uh, so this makes it really nice and easy to listen for events and then have access to all of the instance properties. So this is going to save us a lot of, um, a lot of time and effort later. So handle events, uh, this receives the event object. And, uh, for now, because we're using event delegation, we're going to ignore, um, or let's say, uh, only run for square clicks. So if the event target, the thing that triggered the click event. Um, so if it matches square, so if it has the square class on it, uh, and we're going to add a bang operator to say, if the event target doesn't match square, we are going to return. Now we may at some point have like nested elements inside here. Uh, like the thing that's clicked could be an element inside the button, not the button itself. So for safety, I usually like to say closest, which will detect the clicked thing itself or one of its parent elements. Uh, so I'm going to do, I'm going to do this and then otherwise we'll just, for now, we'll say console log button clicked. So let's, let's jump over here. So button clicked. If I click outside of the button, nothing happens. So that's behaving exactly as we'd hoped. Um, so what I want to do here is when the button is clicked, I want to update it's text content. Um, so update the text of the button. Uh, so we're going to say, um, uh, so we will say, oh, you know what we want to do actually. So we're going to say let button equal. So we're going to, we're going to get that button. So we'll do this. And then, um, if there's no button return, and then we can say button, text content equals this next move. Um, we, uh, we also want to, um, disable the button from future clicks. So to do that, we don't want to apply the disabled attribute. I know that sounds counterintuitive. Um, but when you do that, you remove the button's ability to be focused which can create issues for keyboard navigation and screen reader users. So instead we will set an attribute that we can ignore. So we'll say, um, this set attribute, um, and we'll say is, uh, what do we want to say? Like is, is filled, I guess. Right. Um, we need a second argument here, so we'll just pass in an empty string. Um, but we're, we're basically, we're saying this element, uh, this element is, is, is filled, right? The square is, is occupied, cannot be used. Um, so then if no button or button has attribute is filled. So now we will just, we'll ignore all squares that already have an item in them. We won't, we won't run it. Um, and then the last thing we want to do is update the next move. So we'll say, uh, this, next move equals, um, and then if this next move equals X, Oh, nope, did that wrong. Oh, otherwise X. So if you're unfamiliar with this syntax here, this is a ternary operator. So this works, um, a little bit. This is the equivalent of saying, if this next move equals X, do a thing else. Uh, so if the thing before the question mark is true, do the thing between the question mark and the colon. Otherwise do the thing after the colon. So we are saying if next move equals X set next move to O otherwise set it to X and then we can update the status. Um, so we should have a semi-functional board at this point. Yeah, there we go. Cool. Uh, so we're, we're, we're kind of making moves here. Um, so the next thing we want to do is calculate the winner. Um, so what happens in, in react after you've calculated a winner? 
is there like a, there's not like a reset. So I guess it's go to game start, right? We'll reset the game, except you've got all these moves here. So that's kind of weird. That's all right. We'll deal with that later. That's um, neither here nor there. So let's see how they calculate winner. We're going to steal this. No sense in doing a whole bunch of work we don't need to do. So we'll bring in calculate winner. We'll back this all up. Um, and then we will say um, calculate um, uh, calculate. I don't I don't like calculate winner. So I like um, uh, is winner. Here we go. Um, hmm. No, we can say we, we can say calculate winner. So calculate if there's a winner. Um, we don't need this. This is not, this is not a thing we need. Um, but, uh, so, and then this is going to, um, so we'll say, so we'll say, is there a winner? I like to use verbs, um, calculate if there's a winner, uh, this will return Boolean. If true, there's a winner. So in the react version, they're storing state as a JavaScript object and they're using react hooks to update that every time something happens. I don't love doing that. Um, so what we're going to do, uh, I really, I like the idea of using, uh, using the, um, using the existing Dom as your state. Um, and so actually we can do this. So we can, we can say is filled equals, and then we'll set it to the next move instead of just an empty value. Uh, one other thing we're going to do here, um, where we're getting our elements, we'll say this squares equals this query selector all square. So we're going to get all those squares and let's go ahead and convert it into an array because this is going to be a node list by default. Making an array will allow us to use some array methods that we wouldn't have otherwise. Uh, so if we jump back to... Uh, is there a winner? I like to just use const for everything. So um, we'll say winning combinations because that's what these are. Um, and uh, let's see. So they're looping over each item here. And they're saying if, if all these squares match, then it's a winner. Otherwise, it's not. So, um, uh, let's see. Oh, but this would actually be, this would be values. So, um, we can do, we can do this. So, um, get, get the current values. So we're going to say let squares equal this squares map. Um, and then, uh, we're going to say square. And then we will return. So if you don't know, array map takes an existing array and creates a new one where for each item in the array, you can modify the value at the same index. Uh, so we've got an array of buttons and I want to get back just the, just the values. So we will return square get attribute is filled. And so what I should have afterwards is a, um, I was gonna log that, but I don't need to. What I should have is an array of values. Um, so find the matching value if one exists. This should work the same way. Um, uh, otherwise, uh, return null. I don't really love the whole return return null. So I guess I see what's happening here, right? So it is calculate winner. So calculate winner. Um, I, that would have been, that was the right name. Seeing how this works now, it's not a Boolean. Uh, so what it's actually returning is a string. Um, so if there's a winner, um, I don't know, we'll say the winning value if one exists. Um, so, uh, we are going to, 
Um, so we'll ignore the fact that there could already be a winner for a minute. We'll figure that out in a second. But so we're going to we're going to set our set our value, and then uh, determine if there's a winner. So um, let winner equal calculate winner. Um, but that should be this, and then um, let's just for now let's just log it. Uh, and we will we'll reload and we'll try this. So X, O, X, O, X. So we've got a winner now, X. Fantastic. So that is working as expected. Um, and actually let's do this. Let's, let's make it a, let's make it a property. So this winner equals null. Um, and then we can just, we can update it over time because we're going to need that. So this winner, um, and that should actually, that should happen first. Determine if there's a winner. Um, and if there is a winner, we want to change how update status is handled. So um, we'll say if there is a winner, announce them. Otherwise, show next move. So we can say, if this winner, uh, what does React do? Let's try this out. Okay, winner colon. All right. Uh, this, hmm. Yeah, no, we want to do this differently. That's fine. This game status text content equals winner this winner return um one thing this is not announcing who the winner is and we probably want to do that too but that's that's another fix for later so let's try this winner x excellent cool um so we are we're displaying the winner we don't want to allow the ability to keep clicking. Uh, so inside our event, we're gonna say if there's no button or the button attribute has attribute is filled or if there's a winner, we'll do nothing. So now, yeah, so now you can see you can't, you can't click anymore, which is great. Um, and then the last thing we want to do is display that history. I want to get that working. Um, already, we are both less code and less complexity. There's just less to manage in here. Um, uh, it's just the, the React version is so bulky. Uh, so for game info, we're going to say we want, we actually want the um, ordered list, not the, um, not the, like the parent wrapper. Um, and, uh, we are going to, um, what do we want to do here? So we're going to say, so update status was one. Um, and we will say update game info. That'll be another one. Um, so update the game info section. Uh, Let's see here. So, how do I want to handle this? I don't think I want to re-inject the um, like the whole the whole thing. So we're gonna to need to track history, right? Um, so we'll say, um, hmm, how do we want to how do we want to do this? This is interesting. So we will say this history equals there's like an easy way to do this and a complicated way to do this i probably want to do this the easy way honestly um that just feels like a better way to to handle things um so we've got uh well hmm yeah so we've got we've got i i find this thing where you can like you can go back in time 
and just jump around to different moves. I find that weird, but I want to be able to, I want to be able to replicate that. So let's see, let's see if we can do that. Let's give it a go. Um, this part's going to be complicated. So if you, uh, if you're feeling, if you're feeling overwhelmed at this point and you want to bounce, I totally get it, but, um, we're going to see if we can, if we can make this work. So let's think through this portion. So I need to, I need to keep track of the square and its value. And then I need to, um, and then I need to save that in history and be able to like jump back to it and reset it. Um, that is okay. I think I've got it. Um, I actually, I, okay. I can make this, I can make this work. Okay. So we are going to, um, so update game history. Cool. So we are, uh, we're going to say, uh, let me just, I'm going to cheat for a second and see how, see how react does this. So they've got set history next history. And so next history is they're just like, they're completely overriding it with next square. So they're pushing. Yeah. We're going to do this differently. I'm going to ignore what they're doing here. Um, so we are going to, um, we're going to say current, current state. Um, and then we are for each of our squares. So this squares map square. Uh, so we're going to, we're going to get our, get our squares. And then we're again going to return square get attribute um, uh, is filled. So we'll get that value. Um, and we probably want, we probably want to make this, probably want to make this a function, right? So we'll say um, get, oh, I put it in the wrong spot. Hold on. Um, so we're doing this twice now. So that tells me we need to abstract it out. So get square values, return, we'll do that. Get the values of the game squares. This returns an array, the, the game square values. Now we're doing it consistently. Um, so we'll say this get square values and we'll do, we'll do the same thing here. Uh, and then we will update our history. So this history push current state console log this history. Cause I just, I want to be able to see it. Um, okay. So what we're doing here is we're getting the current state of the board. We're going to add that state to the um uh to the next or to our history object did i define that uh and then we're just gonna we're gonna log the whole thing let's make sure we do that so um uh calculate winner update status and then um update history so this update did I update game info? Okay. Yeah. So we'll do, I guess we'll just, we'll update game info. Um, and, uh, we're not really updating the game info though. Are we We're we're updating the history? So I'll have to maybe pull that out too, but we'll see. So, uh, let's see. So now we've got, we've got an array with X. The next move, you can see X and O. Okay, perfect. So um, let's let's also update the. Um, so when we update game info, what we've got for update game info, we're going to. Um, no, you know what? We can leave that. Yeah, we can we can leave this on one thing. I'm sorry. So update game history. And then um, we'll add button 
to um uh add button to game info so let let button equal document create element button um let's say button set attribute um jump to and then we will give it a value of uh, whatever the the current history length is, we want to get that index basically. So um, this history length minus one because the length indexes start at zero. So if you have an index with nine items in it, the last index is eight. Um, so uh, so we will do that, and um, then we will say, uh, what is the element? Game info. Here we go. Um, oh, we did this wrong. Okay. So let list item equal document create element list item. Here we go. List item text. Nope. We're going to go inner HTML on this one. Equals. Uh, it's going to be a button jump to and then real quick what does this look like in react go to move number okay cool so we'll say um let move equals so we're gonna get the well i don't even need to save this to a variable that's that's silly okay so uh what is it go to move number go to move number this history length and um, jump to equals this history length minus one and then this game info append li so this should uh, oh and let's go with um, uh, what do we got here? Go to game start. All right. Okay. So go to game start. Uh, we want to start with a default button in here. So we will go li button button li go to game start. Uh, and this is going to be jump to equals and we're going to put negative one here. Uh, this is going to be our, like our, our reset um, value. Uh, so if it's, if it's less than zero, that's where we'll jump to. So let's try this now. Go to game start. Number one, two, three, four, five. Okay, cool. So we've got, oh, and they're not including a space. So I guess I shouldn't. We want to make this like fully feature parity here, right? So go to move number. Um, okay, so now we're getting these. We need to handle. We need to handle those two. So we're gonna update our handle event method, right? Uh, so we will. We'll pull everything that was in there out to handle. Um, handle squares. Uh, and we will say handle click events on game squares and then in here we're going to run this handle squares event and then we're going to have another one of these right that handles jump to uh, so we will create another another one of these handle jump to it's going to accept the event uh, event delegation is awesome we don't need to add another event listener because we already have one handle click events on the jump to links cool um so for these we're gonna we're gonna steal this basically um so if uh only we're gonna get for this one we're gonna get the attribute jump to and then we will say if there's no button Fail. We don't care about the other stuff. That's that's fine. Um, uh, cool. 
So let's think this through now. Um, so we need to we need to reset the board. So um, uh, so let's get jump to equals. And then we're going to get the attribute from the button. Uh, so we'll get the jump to attribute and we are going to convert it into a number because it'll be a string by default. So I'm going to run it through parse float, get the jump to index uh, console log jump to. Let's see what we got here. Just click the board a few times. So jump to one, five, negative one. Great. Um, so now we're going to uh, set board to historical state. So for this, uh, we are, well, there's a couple of things we want to do. So let's get, get the corresponding history item. Uh, how do I want to do, how do I want to do this? So if um, we need, we actually need a default history entry and we can, then we can avoid doing the whole, hold on. So I now understand there's one thing React was doing that makes sense. So this history it's literally, it's the only thing they're doing that makes sense. So let's do, let's do this. Uh, so we're going to, we're going to have a default history entry index zero that has nothing in it. Um, uh, no, I don't like this. Actually, let's do this differently rather than doing it the way they're doing it. We are going to say, um, what are we doing for? for history. Forgive me, I'm jumping around a little bit um, as I, I kind of figure this out. But so we're getting the square values. And that yeah, so we'll do this, right? So let's actually, so update history. There we go. We'll move that to its own, to its own thing, because we're going to use it more than once now. Um, so update game history there's literally nothing to do here um so update game history we can literally just run this update history and now we can do that um we can do that here too where is it cool set default status set default history Add the click event listener, and then inside our our thing here, we uh, the index will. No, we still want. I'm sorry, we still want this. We just have a default history entry now, so this is useful. Okay, so sorry. Okay, so um, so it will not be it will not be negative one. That's right. The default will be zero. Okay, so now that saves us from having to do some like if else kind of stuff. So we will say let history equals this history jump to. Uh, so we're going to get the specific history entry for the thing we just clicked. Um, so let's, let's process that now. Uh, cannot read undefined of push, okay. Let's see, 258, what did we do wrong? Let's jump to it, 254. This history push current state, this get square values. Okay, so why, why not? Oh, right, because I'm an idiot and I deleted, here we go. This history equals, we gotta keep the empty array there, we update it. All right, let's try that again. Excellent, so we're gonna go, we're gonna add some history items here. And then, yeah, so we get the current, the current history item. Excellent, no, 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 no. All right, so 
now, this is where the fun happens. Uh, so now we can loop through each of our squares. So let's square of this squares. Um, and um, hmm, how do we want to do this? No, we need to use for each. I'm sorry, squares, this squares for each because we need the index. Uh, so we're going to go square index. Uh, sorry, I don't know if you can hear my dog barking in the background. Um, cool. And so then for each square, we are going to grab its, its value from history and we are going to, we're going to set it. Uh, so we will, um, we will do this. So we will say um, this, no, so square um, text content equals, well, let's get the value actually. So let val equal um, history index, it'll just be the values. Okay, so um, actually I don't even, I guess I don't even really need to set this to a value, do I? So history content equals, um, so if there's a history index, we're gonna use it. If not, we'll wipe it out. Um, and then we can say if there's a value for, uh, if there's a value for the history index, we will also um, set square um, is, how do I want to do this? So um, square set attribute is filled. We'll set it to that value. Otherwise, if there's not one, we want to remove any is filled attribute. So this should, uh, this should reset the board and then we're going to want to update the game info and update the status, right? So we will also, let's see, where did I go? Handle squares, handle jump to. Okay, so let's uh, let's do this. Let's this update game info. Uh, before we do that, we need to update. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. We don't want to do that. We want to update, not update the history. What am I trying to do here? Uh, it's the same thing we do when we calculate the winner. Apologies. Here we go. So, um, so what do we want to, what do we want to do? How do we want to do this? Um, I feel like we're so close. Let's start. We'll do one thing at a time. I'm try, trying to do too much stuff. So let's comment this out. Cool. So we're going to boom, 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 boom. Oh, that's weird. Why? So I did that wrong, obviously, because we removed some buttons. Nope. Remove attribute, not the square. That'll do it. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So this is kind of working as it's supposed to. The one thing that's missing from the history is um, we don't have what the next move should be. So we probably need to get that in there. Um, and we also need to reset the winner. Okay, so a uh, couple things. Let's quickly, let's quickly jump into this. So uh, this history, update history, Let's scroll down. I'm going to open this in two different windows now. So this, let's see, update history, uh, get current squares, and then for each item, we're going to have, we're going to have two things here. So we're going to have board state, 
And um, actually, we don't even need to set a value for that, do we? This board state and then um, uh, next move equals this next move. Um, and I suppose we might as well do this, right? We'll just, we'll store it. That's fine. So um, let's reload. Uh, hmm. One other thing we need to do though. Uh, so when, when we reset history, history equals this, and then uh, we're gonna say let, what did I call it? Board state. Let board state equals history board state. We don't, again, we don't need to set a variable for that. So in here, we'll just go uh, history board state instead of just history. Um, and same thing here, history board state, history board state index. Great. Um, we will also um, reset the current or the, let's call it the next move and winner. So this next move equals history next move. This winner equals history winner. Um, and we also want to update the status, right? So let's go with, um, what are we doing here? Update. We don't need to update the game info. Update status. There we go. I don't know why why that is proving so hard for me <laughs> right now. Um, here we go. This update status. And let's pull this all after the board because I think that's probably where it belongs. Um, all right. Let's try this for realsies now. Okay. So X, O, X, O, X, O. Winner is O. If I jump to three, next player is X. Now I can keep playing, but you can see it adds, it adds another history. So the last thing we probably want to do is wipe back out to that point. Um, okay, so this is the last thing I think we need to do to get full feature parity. Uh, so let's, let's go ahead and do that. Um, so we're going to, um, how do we want to do this? So they only do it after you select another, another step. So let's say, um, so when you handle or when you select a square, uh, let's see. So we're before we do any of this, right? So, um, if at a historical entry, wipe all after current. Um, so to do this, we need to do two things. One of them would be we want to track, uh, this, uh, um, what do we want to call it? Uh, his, hmm, history index equals null. Okay. So we're going to do that. So history index equals null. So this will have no, no value. Um, if we jump to, we are going to, uh, Oh yeah, obviously let's do that. This jump to, there we go. Cool. Um, 
So in that case, instead of history entry, it's jump to. And then in here, um, so if this jump to does not equal null, oh, we can handle this in another thing, right? So um, where am I? Where am I doing that? So we've got update game info. We can handle it right in there, can't we? So update game info equals, so before we update the history, um, hmm, that's right. We'll want to wipe the previous history as well. Um, so we'll get that sorted in a sec. First, um, we're going to say uh, if there's, um, how do we want to say this? So if there's, uh, if we're, if we're, if we're on a historical state, wipe all that come after it. Okay. Uh, so if this jump to does not equal null, we are going to, um, okay. So the index would be, uh, oh, okay. Yeah. So we're going to, I guess we'll get all the buttons, right? So we'll say this game info let uh, let items equals this game info query selector all um, li and then we want to we want to remove all the ones that come after the index we're currently on so. Um, we will say items for each item index. Um, if index is greater than this jump to item remove. And then we'll do the same thing in update history. Add new history entry. If currently on a uh, historical entry, remove, uh, what did I say? How do I wipe all that come after it? There we go. Wipe all that come after it. So if this jump to does not equal null, um, we are going to, uh, this is much easier with an array actually. Uh, so we can say this history splice um, and I'm going to, I'm going to look this one up because I always, I always have trouble with splices. Um, cool. So it is uh, start, delete, and items. Um, so delete is the number of items to delete from the array. Um, ooh, okay. So how do we want to, slice is the one I want not splice. Here we go. Slice. Array prototype slice. Create a slice starting at a particular index. Um, so what is it? We've got start and end. Okay, cool. And it creates, it creates a new entry. So this history equals this history slice zero this jump to should be the right way to do this. And then um, where we're running this on. So if, uh, what was the last thing? So handle squares. Uh, so we're going to update game info. And then we're going to say this jump to equals null. So if, 
if we were on a historical thing, we're not anymore. Let's try this. Okay. Go. Mm. Okay, we are off by one. Yeah, we're off by one. Um, so let's jump back down. It's jump to minus one. And do that. Try that again. Let's go to a move we know. So this should be move three. Mm -mm. Hmm. Yeah, we messed that up. And by we, I mean me, because you guys didn't do anything. You're just watching. This jump to this jump to one more time. So let's do this real simple. One, two. Okay, so we jump back to X. Hmm. Yeah, so that's where we are now. What am I looking at for? Jump to one, jump to two. Oh, is it a, I need to do like a greater than or equal to, right? Okay, so um, I need to log some things. That's really what needs to happen. So um, I'm going to say console log this jump to, and then is it the history length minus one bit? Yeah, the issue is specifically with the history length. So this equals jump to plus one. Is that what we need? Let's just try that real quick. Move to. Boom. Yeah, there we go. Game start. All right, cool. We got it. All right. Sweet. There's a winner. Go to start. We can start over. All right, excellent. Okay, that was it. That was the missing piece. Awesome. So let's just do a quick tally here. Uh, keeping in mind, we have a lot more comments than we did, or we do in the React version. Um, uh, we didn't unfortunately get to fix those accessibility issues. I'd like to do that. Um, I'm just mindful of the time here. Uh, but so we have, what is this? This is, 236 lines, uh, and the React version is, let's scroll down. So the React version is 126 lines. So it is 110 less, it's about let's say, half the size, but uh, it is also loading all of React and Babel. Um, and quite frankly, it's really damn confusing to read. Um, so the answer is, can we do it? Yes. Um, I think this is an example of where manual DOM manipulation honestly does start to get a little clunky and start to break down. Um, I think that the React version of rendering this is harder to wrap your head around um, because of React conventions. So I think in the next video, I might show a different way to handle this that uses state-based UI, but in a way that is less, well, let's say weird. Um, so we will tackle that in another video. Um, if you enjoyed this one, uh, please do me a favor, like it, comment, subscribe, share it with other people. It makes YouTube happy, which makes me happy. Um, and if you'd like to learn how to do more stuff like this yourself, jump on over to leanwebclub.com. You can sign up for free today. You get access to coaching and my entire catalog of courses and workshops, and I really hope to see you there. Thanks so much, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.